There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again, one again, once again to geometry. Um, I'm going to start the third section, which is sort of just a little mini section here, using something called Heron's formula. I'll talk to you about the, what that is in a moment. Um, it's also called Hero's formula. So I brought in a picture of a hero. He's the representative of Heron's formula. I'll talk about that in a minute. First, you know, just a sort of an introduction, sort of a warm up. Find the area of each one of these triangles. So you have to label your paper. Um, this one has sides eight, six, and eight. The other one has eight sides six, eight, and four. So find the area of each one of these triangles. I'll be back in, say, 30 seconds or so. Should be able to get some numbers to work with here. Give you a second to write them down and think. So you may want to pause it. If you haven't had a chance to find the areas, pause it and take a minute. Try to find each area on there just to keep this thing moving along. I'm going to talk a little bit here. So obviously you know, you look at these and you go, okay, well, I want to find the area of these triangles. The area of a triangle is one-half base times height. And I've given the bases on both of these. You could call the base 6 or the base 8 if you wanted to. You've got to be able to find the height. So you've got to be able to draw altitudes. So maybe you sketch an altitude for both of one of these as a first step. And like we did a lot of times yesterday drawing apothems, um, it cuts, you know, for this one, because these are both 8, because it's isosceles, it cuts this 6 into 3 and 3. You guys know that. And you can use Pythagorean theorem to find the altitude on there. So 3 squared plus 8 squared would give you 8 squared. And if you leave that answer exact, you know, I think 64 minus 9 is 55, you get square root of 55. And the square root of 55 is approximately 7.4. So there's my approximate height. And once you have your height, you multiply your base, and don't forget again to divide by 2 at the end. So you multiply all that stuff out, you could get, I think it's around 22 for an approximate area for that green triangle. Pretty simple. You've been doing that for a while. Try the blue one if you haven't done so yet. And hopefully you get frustrated and you go, well, this is, you can't do it. And I'd ask, if I was in class, I'd ask the question, why can't you do it? Well, it's much harder to, you know, this divided into two equal parts. Clearly, this is not equal. Because this side is longer than that side, this side is going to be longer than that part of it. So the 8 will not be divided equally. It is divided proportionally. You could do this with proportions, but I, you know, it's a little bit messy to try to do this with proportions and then still go and find the, the, um, the height and each one of these sides on here. To do it without proportions, they bring in something called Heron's formula. This is why they have Heron's formula. This is one of the most valuable reasons on here. Think about why this question is so much easier. What, what are you able to find or what are you given in this problem that makes it easier? And why is this problem so hard? And hopefully the thing you come up with is you're not given the height. So much harder problem on here. This little paragraph here on your paper is to just talk about who Heron was. He's a mathematician from this little part of the world. There's a little picture there to remind you where he's from. All of you know what country that is. Northeastern Africa. Some of you just had a geography test, you freshmen. You obviously know that's Egypt. Um, he was from Egypt, and he came up with this formula that doesn't require knowing the height of a triangle. So you don't have to use one half base times height. You can just know this side length, this side length, and this side length. Know the three sides, and you can find the area of the triangle. Completely independent of height. Height will not matter at all. So it sounds kind of unusual because usually you think of, height, of areas being base times height. Here's this crazy formula that doesn't require it at all. Um, but again, I said he's from Egypt. He's from the most popular city name in this part of the world. There was a guy, a conqueror by the name of Alex, um, who named a bunch of cities after himself. He's from the city of Alexandria, Egypt, is where Heron was from. And he came up with this formula many, many, many years ago. Um, and it's sometimes used in math books, and sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. So it's sort of a little extra lesson here, a little mini lesson. So I want you to use it to find the area of each one of these triangles. I'll show you the formula and try to use it to find the area of each one of these triangles and see if you get the same thing you got here. See if you get 22 point whatever. Um, and then we'll do it with the new one that you couldn't find before. So I'll throw up the formula here. It's called Heron's formula or Hero's formula. Looks something like that. Capital A obviously stands for area. You've got to find S. Multiply S times the quantity of S minus A times the quantity of S minus B times the quantity of S minus C. So you're actually going to get four different numbers here, and you're going to multiply those four things out. Now, if you think of that, if I'm multiplying four numbers, let's say this S was in feet, 
you'd have feet times feet times feet times feet, or feet to the fourth power. And you know that that wouldn't make any sense because feet to the fourth power isn't area. Area is square units. How can you take something to the fourth power and turn it into something squared? Oh yeah, got to take a square root. So just to make this thing even more beautiful, you find these four quantities, you multiply them, you get a really big number, and then you take the square root of the whole thing at the end to kind of reduce the value of it to actually get it into square units as opposed to units to the fourth power. Now the obvious question right now better be, what the heck is S? I don't know what S is. Um, a, B, and C might be obvious. There's A, there's B, there's C. There's A, there's B, there's C. A, B, and C are the side lengths. S is something called a semi-perimeter. And most of you know what the prefix semi means. You know what a semi-circle is. Semi-circle is half of the circle. A semi-perimeter is half of the perimeter. So you find the perimeter, you calculate the perimeter, you divide it by two. And that's your semi-perimeter. That's what this S represents for each one of these. And it's in here four different times. It's in here once. Then it's in here with subtraction, it's in here with subtraction, and in here with subtraction. So there's the formula. You know, pause if you need to, write it down, and then try it with this, you know, this set of side lengths from the previous problem. So there's A, there's B, there's C. The perimeter would be 8 plus 8 plus 6, which is 22. The semi-perimeter would be half of that, or 11. So the S in this equation is going to be 11. 11 minus 8 is one of these quantities in here, or 3. 11 minus 8 again, another 3. And then 11 minus 6 gives you 5. So this is what the formula looks like. You're going to get up with you know four different numbers here. Semi-perimeter, and then three other quantities that involve subtraction on here. And then don't forget at the end to take the square root of the whole thing, because otherwise you're going to get a number that's way too big. It won't make any sense. So it's really 11 times 3 times 3 times 5, which I believe is 495. Now you pull up the calculator, multiply that out, you get 495. If you take 495, it can be simplified. Divide 495 by 9, and you'll get a square root in there of 3 rad 55. The approximate value is 22.2. .2. So if you hit square root, you get 22.2 .2 is approximate square root of 495. Now, the reason I'm showing the exact value, if you remember back to the previous problem, I said find the altitude. The exact value of that altitude was rad 55. That's where that radical is coming from. So you can get this answer exact or approximate either way. Heron's formula works, as does an altitude. Now, the other one that you can't do the altitude very easily, so Heron's formula probably will work a lot quicker. So first step, find the perimeter, add them all up, divide it by 2, multiply, square root, and I'll be back to check that answer in a minute on part 2.